untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl Games video. Today we're taking a look at a mono blue Kiora deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon and our deck has a bit of a Kraken, Octopus and Serpent theme throughout. So let's take a look at our commander here. Kiora the Tide's Fury is 4 mana for 4 loyalty. Then the first plus 1 conjures a card named Kraken Hatchling into our hand, the 1 mana 04 Kraken. The second plus 1 can untap target creature or land, prevent all damage that would be dealt to and dealt by the permanent until end of turn. So we can use that to potentially ramp by untapping our land after floating it for mana, can prevent an opposing creature from dealing damage to us, and we can also potentially try and protect one of our own creatures so it can maybe block a larger creature from the opponent. So a lot of different permutations. And then a minus three is what we're most interested in. We can sacrifice a Kraken, and if we do, create an 8-8 a blue Kraken creature token. So we can sacrifice those Kraken hatchlings to make a nice big 8-8 token. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck, starting out with our creatures, where we have a small snow theme as well, as you'll notice with our 40 snow-covered islands. So at one mana we have Ascendant Spirit, one of the few non-sea creatures in the deck, but still quite powerful as it can scale and grow up to a very large creature with flying that draws us extra cards if we sink enough snow mana into it. Then at 2 mana we've got Ornithopter of Paradise, potentially letting us cast a turn 3 Kiora, as well as a Jacob, because we do have some expensive cards in the deck, so if we can transform Jacob into Hawkins Insight, we can potentially cast some of those for free. And then at 3 mana we've got Manowar, stays on theme, can return an opposing creature back to their hand. We've got Tireless Angler, a new alchemy card that lets us draft a card from Tireless Angler's spellbook whenever we play an island. And there's some uh, Krakens and Octopuses in there as well that we can potentially draft, so it stays on theme as well. Then we've got Nadir Kraken, which can pay one mana whenever we draw a card to put a plus one plus one counter on it and create a 1-1 one -one tentacle creature token. We've got Sea Dasher Octopus, which we can flash in or potentially mutate as well at instant speed. And whenever that creature deals combat damage to a player, we get to draw a card. Tempest Jin gets plus one plus so for each basic island we control, that also counts our snow-covered islands. Then at four mana we've got Carrix, the Raging Isle, which is a Leviathan Crab. A Leviathan, another creature type that's relevant, as we'll see later. It's an O17, and then we can pay three mana, and then Carrix gets plus X, minus X until end of turn, where X is the number of islands we control, so it can potentially represent a ton of damage, can even activate it multiple times if we want, and spells our opponents cast at that target Carrix, costs two generic mana and more to cast. Then we have Wander, the 4 mana 2 2 flyer, and as long as it's in our graveyard, if we control an island, creatures we control have flying, so we actively want Wander to end up in the graveyard, have a few ways of discarding it, so that we can potentially give those 8 8 tokens flying, making them much harder to block. We've got Spark Double, which can potentially copy Kiora and can ignore the legendary rule, so we can get multiple planeswalkers going. Then the Mesmerizing Benthid is an octopus, generating two illusion tokens when it enters battlefield. And then we get to some of the bigger sea monsters, including Serpent of Yawning Depths, a 6-6, saying Krakens, Leviathans, Octopuses, and Serpents we control cannot be blocked, except by Krakens, Leviathans, Octopuses, and Serpents. We've got Cryptic Serpent, costs one generic mana less to cast for each instant and sorcery card in our graveyard. We've got the Gearseeker Serpent, which gets a discount for each artifact we control. Holebreaker Horror, very powerful at 7 mana, is also a Kraken Horror. We've got Slin Voda, the Rising Deep, which we can kick for a total of 10 mana, and then when it enters the battlefield we get to return all creatures to their owner's hand, except for Merfolk, Krakens, Leviathans, Octopuses, and Serpents. And finally, Icebreaker Kraken, an 8-8 that costs 1 generic mana less to cast for each snow land we control, so we can usually cast it around turn 6. And when the Kraken enters battlefield, artifacts and creatures target opponent controls don't untap during that player's next untap step, and we can also get it back into our hand. Then taking a look at our non-creature spells, at 1 mana we've got a few cantrips with Opt and Consider. Dive Down is a way to potentially protect our 8-8 Kraken tokens. Fading Hope gives us a bounce spell, and Hard Evidence makes a cramp and a clue token for one mana. Then at two mana we've got a few bounce spells, including Blink of an Eye and Into the Royal, which are basically the same, can kick them to draw a card. Disdainful Stroke, Essence Scatter, 
a few more counter spells here with memory lamps, negate, tails end, and the classic counter spell to give us a bit of interaction on the stack. Then ominous seize and enchantment that will accumulate counters, and then at some point we can remove eight of those counters to create an 8 8 blue kraken creature token. We also have the Marital Ages Slumber, a legendary snow enchantment that lets us cry whenever a snow permanent enters a battlefield under our control. And at the beginning of our upkeep, if we control 10 or more snow permanents, we can sacrifice it to create a 2020 Black Avatar creature token with flying and indestructible. So another reason to include those snow covered islands. And then we've got some ramp artifacts with Mindstone, Guardian Idol, Cold Steel Heart, and Arcane Signet to help us cast a turn 3 Kiora. Then at 3 mana we've got a bit more ramp with the Celestus, Replicating Ring and Heraldic Banner pumping our blue creatures. And having these 3 mana ramp artifacts is still useful as that allows us to play turn 4 Kiora and play the 1 mana Kraken Hatchling in the same turn. Then Archmage's Charm very flexible as well, another counter potentially. We've got Sky Dancer as another powerful Planeswalker that we're good at protecting with those Kraken Hatchlings. We've got the Tome of the Infinite, which is just a fun card that can get us a random number of these one drops in our hand every turn. Then Midnight Clock, more ramp artifacts. We've got Icebind Pillar to tap opposing creatures or artifacts down. Bounty of the Deep, also thematic, is often just a nice two for one. Then Tessard's Gambit can help us proliferate onto our Planeswalkers and draw two cards. Memory Deluge as an instant speed card draw spell plays well alongside our counter spells. Then Whelming Wave is one of the payoffs for including all those different creature types, as we get to return all creatures to their owner's hands, except for Krakens, Leviathans, Octopuses, and Serpents. Then Key to the Archive, very powerful as well, another ramp artifact that lets us draft a card from the spellbook. Then at 5 mana, Time Warp to take an extra turn. Jason Revel of Secrets, another powerful Planeswalker that can bounce stuff and draw cards. Graven Lore also takes advantage of our snow mana base to scry 5 potentially and then draw 3 cards. Then topping off our curve, Shark Typhoon can make a flying shark or we can cast the 6 mana enchantments to make multiple shark tokens. We've got to discover the formula as a powerful new alchemy card, letting us essentially draw 3 spells and then make them all cheaper. We've got Karn's Temporal Sundering to take an extra turn and bounce an opposing permanent if we control a legendary creature or planeswalker when we cast it. Then we've got Mordekainen as another powerful planeswalker. And finally River's Rebuke as a one-sided bounce effect, similar to our Whelming Wave, but no restrictions here. And then Akira Best the Sea God can also generate an 8-8 blue Kraken creature token with Hexproof this time. And then Chapter 2 and 3 also very powerful, letting us stamp the opponent's stuff and gain control of a permanent and opponent controls and untap it. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, facing Brokos, Apex of Forever. And yeah, our hand looks okay. Got a bit of interaction with the Archmage's Charm. Fading Hope, and then dive down to maybe protect our Kraken. So just gotta hit our land drops early. Can always charm to draw to if needed. So, nothing going on so far. Opponent flashes in a Wildborn Preserver. That's fine. I'll take the 2 damage and maybe bounce it end of turn so I can keep a charm to counter something relevant. Yeah, I guess we'll bounce the Wildborn Preserver here. Opponent can of course replay it for 2 mana. Guardian Idol is interesting, so I don't think I'm tapping out for Cura next turn, which means I'm just gonna keep up Charm again. Might be a little bit too slow, so I'll put it on the bottom. Interesting spot. Think we just pass it back. They can have the Preserver once again. And then we'll see if we need to counter anything, or just draw two with the charm. Alright, let's charm to draw two. 
Our opponent didn't seem to have any response here, so they might not have any counter spells. So let's try and resolve Cura, and then we can still play the Kraken Hatchling afterwards as well. Opponent mutates Brokos. So I'll uh, chump for now, protect Cura. And then next turn we can bounce it. Mana War also works. So we have a few options. Maybe go for Key plus Blink. Uh, could even use Cura to untap. A land, in which case I can key plus mana war, which is maybe better. And probably go for lightning bolt here. Get rid of Celestus. And the next turn we'll have access to a ton of mana. Can maybe discover the formula. Poison tip archer, 2-3 death touch. That's fine. And they can still flash in the preserver. Okay, so want to get a kraken hatchling in play. And then we can still discover, plus maybe cast some additional interaction. So I might want to discover while our opponent cannot counter back. And yeah, we've got some goodies in hand now, including Hullbreaker Horror with a nice discount. So I can still blink for one mana and lightning bolts. Want to keep dive down to protect our 8-8 Kraken eventually. So here bolt seems fine, so we'll make red and blue. Opponent still gets their Brokos. But at least they wouldn't be attacking right away. An opponent growing the preserver. That's fine, no need to bounce. Okay. So I have a lot of options, including playing Holebreaker Horror main phase. Making double blue. Play Midnight Clock. Bounce Brokos. Play Guardian Idol. Bounce Preserver. And keep up Dive Down. And we'll uh, turn this into an 8 8. Hit for 2. Alright, so we're in a pretty good spot. As soon as I pick up an island, we can make use of the Towerless Angler. And we can also use our one mana instance as a pseudo counter spell with the Holebreaker. Mesmerizing Benthids. Yeah, that's kind of annoying, but I guess we'll let it happen. Can always bounce the tokens. And a Crozen Grip I cannot respond to, so that works. Ooh, Shark Typhoon. So, getting more Kraken Hatchlings also good synergy with the Holebreaker Horror. Giving us more blue spells to cast. And, um, yeah, hard cast Shark Typhoon, why not? And our opponent has seen enough. Sweet, on to the next one.
All right, we're on the draw, facing a red-green Godzilla deck. And our hand's okay. Got a couple of ramp artifacts, opt to hit my land drop to maybe cast a turn three Kiora. And I imagine Mana Wars can be quite useful here too. Opponent foretold a card in red-green, not sure what that means. As much as I like Tails Ends, I need to find a land here. There we go. And Arcane Signet seems like a safer investment than Ornithopter. So we'll start there. So no red mana so far, and a Sarulf's Packmate was the card they foretold. Pretty decent, although our Kraken Hatchlings line up quite well. That being said, if I play Kyura, I wouldn't be able to protect her, since we wouldn't be able to play the Hatchling yet. So maybe this turn I still want to kind of play it slow, go Midnight Clock plus Ornithopter. And then next turn I can play Kyura and a Hatchling in the same turn. So we don't lose our Planeswalker to a combination of pump spells or fight spells. There's a red mana for Mana Geode. And then I probably don't want to bounce the pack mate with Mana War, but we'll wait to bounce something bigger. Get to untap. Play Kyora. And we'll get our Kraken Hatchling and play it. And then I'm pretty happy for opponent's next turn is just playing Godzilla. Next turn I can make an 8-8 token, protect it with dive down if needed. Duel for dominance. Yeah, I mean I could protect my Ornithopter here. Don't think that's really necessary. Shifting Ceratops with protection from blue, that's a problem. That's a very big problem. So wouldn't be able to block it. Cannot be countered, can't target it with anything. So... That's pretty much game over here. They can take out Kiora. I guess that's why they wanted to take out Ornithopters, because the Ornithopter at least could have blocked the Ceratops. So, Kyura down. That's gonna make this game incredibly difficult. See, Dash Octopus, I could mutate onto the Hatchling to draw. Think I'm better off discovering the formula this turn and hopefully pick up like a mass bound spell, like Reverse Rebuke, to maybe get a foothold in this game. And I might as well cast it now in case I pick up something else I want to play. Well, there's my Reverse Rebuke. And uh, I guess I could still mutate for one mana. Is that worth it? Sure. And that also combos well with our Serpent here, making Octopuses unblockable. So that can keep attacking, generating card advantage. Opponent cycles the author Godzilla. 
Okay. And a Yorvo. That's fine. Take eight. Alright, so what's next? Have seven, eight mana potentially. Could play the Serpents. Get in with the Octopus, maybe play an Ominous Seas as well to get that going. But I'm falling pretty low, so it's possible I have to Rivers Rebuke already. Although the longer I can wait on it, the more effective it's potentially going to be. So if I can establish a bit of a board presence first, that would be better. So let's say we play Serpents. Could always play Mana War to bounce something, or keep up Dive Down to protect the Serpent from another fight spell. So probably want to start here. Make my Octopus some blockable. Mindstone the draw. So I could play Mindstone and that's it if I want to keep up Dive Down. Or I could uh, Mana War. Sky Dancer would just be a distraction as it also dies to one attack from Ceratops. Yeah, I guess we'll Mindstone for now. Pass it back. So Ceratops can still hit us for 5. Hopefully Serpent can hold off any other attacks. And there's Godzilla, that's fine. Could also use Dive Down to block Yorvo and then kill it basically. Which seems acceptable. Opponent going for Snakeskin Veil. I guess this will end in a draw. Alright, so this is going to be our big Rivers Rebuke turn. And then, yeah, the Ceratops can kill me in one attack at least. Can get some Planeswalkers going too in the meantime. That's kind of a distraction. Midnight Clock also close to giving us a fresh hand. So this is going to happen no matter what. So I don't think playing Ominous Seas is going to accomplish much, so I could cycle it. But let's start by attacking. See what we draw for the Octopus. Hallbreaker Horror. That's actually one of the few ways to interact with Ceratops while it's on the stack, but not going to have the mana to deploy it here. So instead, Sky Dancer can plus... And act as a distraction. And I'm probably going to end up cycling Ominous Seas. Or I could level up Midnight Clock. So we'll see if our opponent goes face with the Ceratops and ignores everything else. And there's Ceratops. So I'm hoping they attack Sky Dancer. We're dead to a pump spell. Ceratops goes face. So now our best bet becomes finding a time walk effect to take an extra turn. 
opponent foretells the pack mate. So can cycle ominous seas. Also possible I was better off uh, putting an extra counter on Midnight Clock. That way I had more mana on the following turn to maybe cast like a Karn's Temporal Sundering in addition to a Time Warp. So if I use it twice, if I draw land I can still cast Time Warp. So is that my only out? Or I can attack first, see what I draw. Um, don't think I have a way to pump up my creatures more than two with Heraldic Banner. So I can probably attack first, see what I pick up. I'll land, play it, and then I think it's Midnight Clock twice, because the Akira also cannot target the Shifting Ceratops. Don't think I have many artifact creatures I can draw. And I don't see any time warps. Icebind Pillar, still a blue permanent, so cannot tap down Ceratops. Tome of the Infinite, I guess, could find a fog to save me. So we can both conjure a Source to Plowshares, which would be an answer as a white removal spell, or a fog could prevent all combat damage and let us survive an extra turn. So that's what we're hoping for, so we've got a 2 in 10 chance here. And that's sadly a duress, so that's not going to do it here. But yeah, very close game. Almost managed to beat a Shifting Ceratops playing our mono blue deck, which is quite impressive. Shifting Ceratops, of course, one of the most effective cards imaginable against a mono blue deck. Good game. Would have been fun if we had a fog here, but alas. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Chandra Awakened Inferno, so kind of a red control strategy. My hand is not amazing, given that Chandra's uncounterable, so these aren't going to be too helpful. And this is a little bit better. Can sacrifice a clue turn two to try and hit my land drops. Now we've got a bit of interaction here. And then Time Warp could be fun. They can keep the electrostatic fields. Now the Earth Kraken could be powerful. Could actually mutate a Sea Dasher Octopus here as well. I guess I might as well attack and see if they block. Alright, opponent called our bluff. And I guess we'll tap out for Kraken since I don't have anything else going on. Kraken down. And Charm I can keep up, or I can just cast it now to draw two, hit my land drops, that seems more important. Alright, so not the best start imaginable, but uh, hopefully we can get Kiora going next turn. Smoldering Egg, so opponent is setting up, hiding behind their walls. And we're about to do the same. And our opponent is missing their land drops, so that's the advantage of playing blue, being able to draw some cards. And our bound spells are going to be quite effective at resetting the Smoldering Egg. Gatekeeper. Pretty decent exiling instance, but goes for a creature instead. That's fine. So, could already time warp, so I can attack with an 8 8. Also, don't mind waiting a turn on that, so I can potentially attack twice. And then, for now, probably pass with a bunch of my instants available.
Thorbrain. Okay, that could hurt. Opponent also takes a bit of damage here. So might end up bouncing Torbrain and just cast a Deluge for four. Gear Seeker, Fading Hope. Don't have any artifacts in play to discount a Gear Seeker, so probably go Fading Hope Island. And then... What's my plan here? Could just Fading Hope the Gatekeeper now, or I could cast one of these Unkicked on Torbrain to use up my mana. Okay. And then now is probably a good time for Time Warp. Opponent takes eight. Take an extra turn. And probably no need to Fading Hope anything. Dome's fun too. Don't mind cashing in the Hatchling to make another 8 8. Bone's gonna chump. But I guess we can zoom first. A light of Hope. Okay, so we'll make another 8-8. Eight eight. Cool and I'm probably just pass a turn with a couple instants available. And there's Torbrand once again. That resolves. Can play kicked into the Royal this time. And that's probably gonna seal the deal. Can bounce one creature with the Fading Hope. Mordekainen we can keep on top. It's gonna be able to force him to jump and then mutate the Sea Dasher onto the Crab to draw an extra card as well. But our opponent's seen enough. Alright, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a Keepable Hand facing a Tovalar Werewolves deck. So an early Jacob to maybe cast a Free Serpent eventually. And yeah, we're picking up quite a few expensive sea monsters. Could have also waited an extra turn to keep up the Dive Down Protection. But we'll see how this works out. Opponent passes. So, could use Jacob now in case I pick up a relevant 2 drop I want to cast. And then. Yeah, I guess we'll exile the Holebreaker. Might regret it if they kill Jacob here, but at least one protection spell with Dive Down. Tovalar shows up. Probably want to bounce it now. Or I could do it in my turn to prevent it switching to night time. And then I could also kick it, but then we're shields down on dive down. It's a tricky spot. I think I'll just bounce it now and then probably play Kiora next turn. And then I can untap my lands to keep up dive down if I want. That seems perfect. Could have also used Jacob twice by using Kiora. But this seems better. Arlen resolves. You wanna fight me and my pack? Good luck. And then do I still want the Cold Steel Heart? Next turn could already play Serpent, or I could transform Jacob into Hawkins Insight and then cast a free Holebreaker Horror, which is pretty decent. So let's exile the Serpent for now. Yes. 
so I have to float the mana first. Then transform. And sure, Cold Seal can go. And then play my free Hallbreaker Horror first, probably. In case I have enchantment removal here. 7 8, not that easy to kill for red green. And now we can start bouncing things with the Hallbreaker, which should be able to take over. So, yeah, despite having Cure as our commander, still ended up kind of a Jacob game, which we featured recently in a different video. But kind of showing the versatility of Cura, both having the 8 8 Kraken plan as well as sometimes just untapping our land. It's going to be a primal adversary. That's fine. And then next turn, the Serpent will make my horror unblockable as well, so that can take out Arlen. Tome's fun too, but Serpent seems better here. And then bounce maybe the token first. Can conjure another Kraken. And the opponent has seen enough. The sea monsters are going to be too powerful. Alright. So yeah, we got to see our Cura deck do its thing. Got to make some 8-8 Krakens. And got to see some of the sea monster synergy with Serpent of Yawning Depths. I didn't cast any Whelming Waves, but that's another nice benefit of playing all the sea monsters and having another River's Rebuke type effect. So yeah, that'll do it for today's gameplay. Want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.